This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. Or if you're in Canada like me, you can use the same promo code at Multizone to get 10% off your orders of singles. If cards aren't what you're looking for, Original Magic Art has playmats, tokens, and sweet art that you can use that same promo code to help you get 5% off your order there. If you're looking to bling out your cards, Using Alter Sleeves is a great way to do so, and you can click the affiliate link in my About section to help out the channel as you make an order. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang and welcome back. Today's game is another Patreon special, with Gao returning and having brought Chulane. He keeps a forest, Findhorn Elves, Seaside Citadel, Birds of Paradise, Beast Whisperer, Merrileaf Pixie, and a Thriving Grove. I am playing Ramos, Keeping a Mountain, Temple of Silence, Boros Charm, Eldamri's Call, Trigon Predator, Watery Grave, and a Mountain. New to the channel is Nikos, playing Zedru, and he keeps a Leyland of Anticipation, Path of Ancestry, Howling Mine, Pentad Prism, Command Tower, Reliquary Tower, and Teferi's Protection. We have Brandon coming back with his Patron of the Moon, keeping Four Islands, Negate, Enter the Infinite, and Soratami Muragard. Gao wins the die roll, but before he can take his first turn, Nikos has a pregame effect, putting out the ley line. Gao starts us off by playing the second card of the game, despite this being turn one, and he plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, losing one to find a tropical island, and casts Birds of Paradise. I play a Temple of Silence, which comes in tapped, and scry one, keeping it on top. Brandon just plays an island. Nikos plays a tapped Path of Ancestry. Gao plays a Seaside Citadel tapped, and then casts a Merrileaf Pixie, passing. I play a tapped Watery Grave, and pass. Brandon plays an Island, and passes to Nikos. Nikos plays a Command Tower, and with nothing else, passes turn. Gao plays a Forest, and is able to tap enough mana to cast Chu Lane, and passes to me. I drop a Forest for turn, and cast Trigon Predator. Brandon's turn has him playing at a Terrain Generator, and he passes it back to Nikos, who at the end of turn, flashes out a Pended Prism. Nikos's turn has him playing a Reliquary Tower, and he passes with all of his mana up, because he can play things at flash speed. Gao plays a Thriving Heath, which comes into play tapped, and names Blue. He taps 4 for a Beast Whisperer, and with it coming into the battlefield, Chulain draws a card, and also lets him put a land from hand into play. He puts another Thriving Land into play, and this time also names Blue. We then see a Fintorn Elves, which with the Elves on the stack, has Nikos flashing out Smothering Tithe. Gao then draws 2 cards, which allows Nikos to make 2 treasures. Gao then plays an island off the second part of Tulane's ability, and passes after an explosive turn 4. I untap and play an exotic orchard. I move to combat and swing at Nikos for 2, and with no blockers, Nikos takes the 2. I target the smothering tithe of the Trigon trigger, but Nikos decides to save it by casting Teferi's protection, and phases out. With nothing else, I just pass my turn, and at the end of turn, Brandon activates his Terrain Generator, which lets him put out an island into play tapped. Brandon untaps and draws. He casts Tezzeret's Gambit, paying the two Phyrexian mana, and draws two, but doesn't proliferate anything. He then casts a Floodbringer, and passes it back to Nikos. Nikos untaps and phases back in. On his upkeep, he flashes in a Howling Mine, and draws an extra card on his draw step. He then plays an Island, and with flash speed and an infinite hand size, passes turn. Gao gets to draw two, one for turn, and one from the Howling Mine, which also gives Nikos two more treasures. Gao then casts a Sky Shroud Claim to go and find two forests, and put them into play untapped, before following up with a Linvala Shield of the Seagate. With Linvala's cast, Gao draws one, and then as she enters, draws another, and he gets to put a copy of Exotic Orchard into play thanks to Chulane. This has Nikos gaining two more treasures, and Gao then casts a Gold Mirror, drawing another two, 
which has Nikos making two more. Gao then plays out a basalt monolith and a thought vessel, and he passes to me. At the end of turn, I cast Eldamri's Call and go to find a migratory Greathorn, putting it to hand. I untap and draw two. I don't pay the two for either draw, and Nikos makes two more treasures. I then mutate the Great Horn onto the Trigon Predator, which allows me to go and find a basic to put into play tapped. I put an island into play, and fearing the crackback or loss of my mutate creature, pass turn after Nikos threatens me. Brandon untaps and draws two from the Howling Mine, not paying the Smothering Tithe either. He casts a Fate Spinner, which draws a groan out from the table and then passes turn. At the end of Brandon's turn, Nikos takes the opportunity to flash out Zedru. Once his commander's on the field, he activates Zedru to donate the Prented Prism and the Howling Mine to me. Nikos starts his turn and declares he'll skip his combat step, and then draws four cards and gains two life, showing off how high value a Zedru deck can be. He then moves to his main phase, plays land, and passes turn. Gao draws one from the Howling Mine and one for turn, and Nikos makes two more treasures. Gao declares he'll skip combat, and then plays a Savannah and casts a Sylvan Library. He activates Chu Lane and floats mana with the Findhorn Elves before bouncing it back to hand. He then recasts the Elves, which allows him to draw two, and once it resolves, cast a Vizier of the Menagerie, drawing another two and getting to play a Hollowed Fountain tapped off of Chulain's trigger. He then taps two, casting a Crashing Drawbridge, and drawing another two, and putting a Forest into play. We then see a Gyre Engineer coming into play, drawing him two, and Nikos gains two more treasures, and putting a Windswept Heath into play. He cracks it, and goes to find a Tundra, and then lastly casts a Teferi's Insight, because clearly Nikos has not created enough treasures at this point. This turn alone, he's made 10, and with no mana left, Gao just passes to me. I untap, and draw 2, and Nikos makes 2 more treasures. I declare I'll skip combat, and play a mountain, and pass to Brandon. Brandon untaps, and draws 2, making Nikos 2 more treasures, putting him up to a total of 15, and Brandon announces he'll skip combat. He plays an island, and casts a Sorotami Mirror Mage, and then passes turn. At the end of turn, Nikos flashes out a Paradox Haze and enchants himself with the Aura. Once it's resolved, he then uses Zedru's ability to donate it to me, although it's still attached to him. Nikos opts to skip combat from the Fate Spinner trigger, gains 3 life, and draws 3 cards from Zedru, and then on his second upkeep, skips combat again, and draws 3, and gains 3. We then move to his draw step, and he draws 2, one from the turn, and one from the Howling Mine. In his main phase, he casts a bonus round, doubling all instants and sorceries until the end of turn. He follows it up with a Temporal Cascade, choosing a second mode of having all players draw 7. He gets a copy of this, meaning he, Brandon, and I will draw 14 total, while Gao will draw 28 thanks to Teferi's Insight. We unfortunately go through this, and this increases Nikos' treasure count to 65, demonstrating the insane combo that he's managed to put together. Next up, Nikos casts Temporal Mastery, which gets copied thanks to Bonus Round. In response, Brandon casts Negate, which also gets copied from the Bonus Round, and he chooses to put one copy on each of the extra turn spells. Nikos responds to this by casting a Tybalt's Trickery, and targets both of the counters with his counter. At this point, I get on the action and respond by casting Dovin's Veto, and target the extra turn spells. Nikos in response, flashes out a Gilded Drake. No one has a response to this, and the drake then enters. Nikos uses the trigger for the Gilded Drake to exchange it for the Floodbringer, and with the spell still in the stack, he then casts Sudden Substitution. He exchanges control of both my Dovin's Vetoes with the Floodbringer that Nikos had exchanged for the drake. He gets to choose new targets for it, and he chooses the Negates. This has the Dovin's Vetoes countering the Negates, and the Tybalt's Trickeries then fizzle, and both extra turn spells resolve. Next up, Nikos casts a Font of Mythos, followed by a Mirror of Fate, and then a Sphinx of the Second Sun. He then puts out a Mind Moil, and plays a land for turn. 
He casts Chaos Warp on his commander, which is copied, but also triggers Mind Moil, which puts 15 cards to the bottom and draws Nikos 15 cards more. The Chaos Warp then resolves, and Nikos flips over a Golden Guardian. Nikos then casts a Chrome Mox, choosing to exile nothing, and this triggers the Mind Moil again, which has him put 16 cards from his hand onto the bottom and draw a fresh 16. Nikos then casts Rest in Peace, exiling all the graveyards, and puts his hand on the bottom and draws a fresh 15. He sacrifices the Mirror of Fate to exile all the cards from his library, and puts the Chosen cards back on top. He's now able to loop the Temporal Mastery and Mirror of Fate until he draws his entire library, and he shows his win con of Leave to Chance, where he'll return all permanents he owns to his hand, and then cast a Barren Glory. He'll then cast a Nahiri's Wrath, discarding his hand to blast the table for over 90 damage, and if that's not enough to finish the game, when he moves to his extra turn, he'll win from the Barren Glory trigger. Game review time. I'm not entirely sure how to take this one apart. I think there were two really well-performing decks, mainly Zedru and Chulain, and two decks that unfortunately took a little bit longer to get going, and as a result, weren't able to shine. There are very few cases where I've seen a Chulain deck not go off, and Gao certainly showed us just how powerful the commander is in Bant, and why Chulain is the number one Bant commander on EDH Rec. It was kind of interesting to see how Fate Spinner kind of slowed him down a little bit, since he was able to get a critical mass of creatures, but he couldn't swing with them, and I don't know if he had any other ways to win other than combat. On the flip side, the early smothering tithe plus the Fate Spinner, I think helped Nikos out a lot. I also think having Leyland of Anticipation in your opener is a fantastic start for a Zedru deck, or I guess really any EDH deck, since it allows you to play your lands and then wait until your opponent's turn to see what they do before deciding to cast things. As you saw, doing stuff at the end of Brandon's turn paid off very well, since he was able to put out cards like Howling Mine and get the immediate benefit before anyone else did. I will say that his combo was incredibly convoluted, and I really hope I did a good job of explaining it, but it was also incredibly sweet to see. It required so many cards, and really, it could have been disrupted had anyone not been tapped out or had some kind of disruption in hand. I think unfortunately for Brandon and I, we kept very slow hands, and that seems to be a problem with my Ramos deck. It's something I seem to be encountering more and more with my Ramos deck, and I'm probably going to have to consider adding in more Ram spells. As for Brandon's deck, it certainly seemed to be Moonfolk Tribal, so Tomer would be happy. But beyond that, I'm not entirely sure what his game plan was, so hopefully we'll have him back on so he can show it better. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.